pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> all right, we'll see a motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. Motion to vote. Second. Second by me. Agenda. So move on to old business consideration of multi-purpose building. I think everybody in the room knows it's going to require a bond issue. Um, there's been some interest in the community to maybe try to get something going, possibly, maybe. So what's everybody's thoughts, concerns? We need to kind of discuss it now because if this is something that the board wants to do, then it needs to be got on like ASA. As far as language and all that jazz. Hey, did you, um, I know we have a video link. Did, is that something we want to show? Yeah. yeah. One little slide. Yeah, I'm sure. For Elder, take a second. Also, you guys want to take a look at, there's a handout I just gave you, I just got it printed five minutes ago, it came in about 5.30, that's from Mana. Um, I'll tell you this before I get up there, because you need to be looking at that one up there. They took the uh, scope of what our Cardinal Foundation came up with for an 18,000 square foot building. <clears throat> they took it down to 13,400. They took out the single lane running track. The restrooms are on the exterior. We would have to check that with code, whether that would be allowed or not. Um, they do have some bleachers shown there. That's not included in the cost. Uh, it would be storm rated. It would have a sprinkler. Um, you would have to have HVAC, obviously. Um, and that sprinkler, initially, I thought it would depend on the fire marshal, but it, it doesn't include that in that cost. So. These are very rough, is what he told me. I talked to him about 10 minutes before you guys walked in. Kind of, I just got it like at about 520 or somewhere around there. And uh, they were working on that. So um, that red number down there is, that's where they're thinking they can get it in there. They're doing all those cutbacks to try to get to that number, which is $4.3 million. Do we have the weight room backed out because that's something that, because the equipment we're just planning on moving over? Yes. I'm assuming these are steps going into the restroom that are located on the outer edge. They have steps in there right now, David, that I saw. That's not handicapped accessible. No, but I, I don't know if those are really final plans either. I think they roughed them out pretty quick. No, that, that's one thing that bothers me is we have no plans. We, we're still kind of shooting in the dark. That's an issue. I think part of the problem is that in order to get plans, you're going to have to commit a bunch of money to do it. Uh, so it's kind of a catch-22 when it comes to that. Um, I was thinking those plans were going to cost Fifteen? Yeah, fifteen thousand. Mm -hmm. Sixteen would be hundred dollars. turf areas included in the price. Coach Duke was talking about that um, the floor may be something that they would be able to support otherwise or uh, put that up table that was through the money he's raising. I don't know if he's Yeah, talking about I mean, that. all that would be off of whatever that price is. Whatever you paid for out from, you know, if you had somebody that said, I'll pay for the hardwood floor, that would come out of that 4.3. 
Yeah, I was just curious if this cost included the hardwood floor. Yeah, that, does. that cost includes everything. Anything you take away is cost you're taking off there. Just the takeaways I told you is what they've taken so far. Well, all they mentioned here is the turf. That's what I asked. Are we sure we want to do bleachers only on one side if we're planning on having tournaments and everything in there? I don't think you put bleachers aren't included, are they? No, I don't know. They are not. It's just strictly practice. I mean, there won't be. Well, some of the conversation in the last meeting was in order to have multiple tournaments going on at once. One in the high right. school gym, one in the But there's room for bleachers if bleachers are brought in, right? That's what it looks like. That if, if we would need bleachers on both sides. Oh, I mean, well, we 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 got to talk to 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 well, I'm, I'm afraid we're, we've got so many things up in the air here. Caleb, do you want do you, do you understand this? How they got it broke out? Andy and I um, sat in a meeting with Blaze uh, from Mammoth today as well. Um, I was a little late to it, um, so if, I mean Andy would be able to answer all the questions to the or, or to, to the best of our understanding. Yeah, we've got. Blaze had several answers to several questions you guys are asking each other. Um, if you want, we can yeah. discuss I'm, it. Let's go for it. Yeah, uh, Dr. It. Rob, could you actually bring up the, the bid on your computer, yeah. please? They have it in front of them. Well, yeah, it'd be a lot bigger. So, uh, the blue on your picture, you want to see that? Yeah, well, if, if you can start with the picture first. Yeah. The blue is the 30 feet they reduced to get to that 4.3 number. Um, and they were trying to get it to a reasonable price that we could afford. It did take out some of the turf area. And this, where you see what looks like bleachers, is actually turf. So the turf is from here to here. Uh, they just took out this and this, and that's the walking path around it for a little bit of a track. Um, that's where you're losing that. Um, he did put the restrooms on the exterior to save space inside the building. Um, he also said we could save several dollars um, by, they have four stalls in the women's, one's handicapped, three others, two sinks. Uh, two urinals and two stalls in the men's. He's, he doesn't see why since it's only going to be 10 to 50 people in there at a time, why one or two stalls isn't more than enough in a restroom. Instead of spending a bunch of money because you're not having a thousand people, 400 people in there, anything like that. Um, they have a mezzanine above the weight room um, and then if you look at the prices that he's got, that's better than me trying to put glasses no, on and look at this. All right, so one of the questions was the basketball court, the cost of it. All that stuff is included in the indoor athletic facility line at the 3.6. Um, he said, if you look at it, you can, the weight room equipment, he's got 250,000. They just had people on their team put together what it might cost to do this stuff. We don't need any weight room equipment. Coach Duke is moving what we currently have into this facility. So you can go ahead and take 250,000 off of, well, down here where it's 4.3. Uh, the mezzanine is over 300,000. It wouldn't necessarily have to be done immediately. You know, maybe ag can do it. Maybe a local construction company can do it. You know, later down the road, that would save you 300,000. Uh, parking lot, 
uh, the guy that does that part for him, he didn't realize we're building this right next to a parking lot. You're correct about, you know, the steps going up, it's not ADA. They just gave a rough drawing. He realizes there's gonna have to be some kind of sidewalk, something handicap accessible to get in there. Um, one of the last things he told us are we dead set on a wood basketball floor. He says, you can save a lot of dollars by putting in the sport tech floor. I assume you played on sport techs this weekend. I don't know what that was. It was like a tiled floor that they, uh, that kind of comes in section and they, yeah, it's you, like a floating you, floor. Almost. It's a floating floor. You already got the concrete base. It's the floating floor that you put on top. Uh, it, you put multiple courts on it, it, volleyball, basketball, whatever on them, playing multiple sports. He says you can save a lot of money right there by doing that. He says if somebody's just dead set on having a wood floor, which is fine if they are, he said you can also save a lot of money. You don't have to air condition the building. And I think everybody's always thought, well, if you got a wood floor, you're gonna have to air condition, you know, for the floor, for summertime, humidity, things like that to control that. He said schools for years have not been air conditioned and they've always had a wood basketball floor. When was our school built? 56 and they didn't get air conditioning in the high school gymnasium until like 2002 or 4. So you know you could have a wood floor in this building without air conditioning necessarily. You just have to control the humidity in the summertime. So and he said that would be a savings of roughly four to five. Four to five hundred thousand. The floor would be the savings? No, no, no. The air con no, air, no air conditioning. You're, you're still gonna have to heat the place you know but no air conditioning would save you roughly four to 500,000. He says, if we had to, he says, we can get this place down to 3.6. Uh, I think just if we can get it down to 3.6 and with the generous donation of that 300, and then if the Cardinal Foundation can come up with 300, um, I think you can get that 30 feet back into your building and reduce a couple of these things. You're getting rid of the weight room, uh, the mezzanine, you not, won't necessarily need, uh, you know, the decision on the basketball floor needs to be made down the road. How much money we have, you know. Um, the mezzanine also might be something, construction tree, something like an ag project. It's all uh, wood. Uh, you know, it's it's a lot. Did you find out that that's what Eldon did? I did. They made a small one. Not real yeah, but they're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're uh, uh, ags they along the walls. They did the sidewalk. So you might you might save some money Probably in off. places like that. You know, I, yeah. Materials I have to lay down and keep it good that way. I haven't seen anything on any exterior lighting. So some this is going to be used. The bathrooms are going to be used for football games. It's dark back here across that parking lot. Of the night. Well, I would, I would, it's not, there's no final plans, but I would assume um, the buildings that he showed us they put up, they put up uh, $100 million projects on universities. Uh, I would assume that they plan on putting lights around the exterior for well, security. I'm not talking about the exterior, I'm talking about from bleachers or the grandstands to this facility. Oh, we have lights. We have, room, yeah, we lights. have lights that light up the parking lot every night. Yeah. I think they're right. That's right. But you're right, Dave. We probably would need some additional lighting in some spots for sure. Well, the, the game football field I don't lights. I think it'd be a lot. They're, they're on when people would be trying to use it because there's a game going on. So. Well, they're going to be using it throughout the game. Yeah. He's saying with the stadium lights, you get a lot of With the stadium there. lights that are on. It's not all that bright in behind there because I've sat up there on, on the hill and watched the football game and watched people stumbling around out through there going to their cars. Well, that, you know, whether that's from darkness or alcohol, I don't know. It's not my concern, but this is. You guys want to see the video? Can I get a Do you have any other minute? questions on what Blaze said? Blaze also said he gave us his phone number. We can call him right now. If you all want to, if you have questions directly for him, he said he'll make himself available at any time to come meet with you all, to give you any other information. Uh, he realized this is not super detailed, 
but when there was rumors of 5.2 million for this project, he was not happy because he said that wasn't representing him or his company very well for just throwing out an arbitrary number. Uh, that was like saying, oh, well, Derek, you do basketball for us. What would it cost for you to, your company? Craig, you, you do uh, HVAC, what would it cost for your company? So they took a bunch of high numbered bids to throw together to give us a number up front. And he, he really, I mean, they're trying to sell us, they want our, our business, but he, re, he really thinks he can get this down to a reasonable number that we can work within. That is the number. The number that I originally remember from the architect when they first brought this up was, it was in the four point eight eight million, but then that's why I was so hard on Coach Duke the other night. You know, there's not enough details here. I mean, they're coming in. They were coming in at three point two million, and that's not enough. I mean, that's not enough to get. I want to do this once. I don't want to come. You know, anybody coming back in two or three years and saying, "Well." You know, we should have done this and we should have done that. We're going to do it right or we ain't doing it. My vote. Well, I mean, we're not. This is kind of a. I know this is preliminary, but, yeah. you know, we've got to they, get they our introduction. Very, they were very nice to, to spend two and a half, three hours today to get us these numbers uh, to get things started. This isn't, he says, this isn't how they typically do business. We say we want to do a project. They give us a drawing. We look at it and then we work on the numbers afterwards, not throw some numbers out first and then decide, well, I want this and I don't want that. You know, Coach, where they from? Kansas. I did have a question about uh, getting us down uh, and eliminating that spot. If they're running um, turf all the way up to the basketball court, did they talk about, because we did talk about portable seating down the road. I, I don't know how that works with turf. Just put like, it right over the top. You could put it would right you be on able top to, of the yeah. turf, yeah. Because it's just like the, the legs, the way that they fold up, they kind of like fold up so you can tip it over and then roll it out a door. Yeah. I just didn't know if that hurt the turf. I, yeah. I'm not familiar with that. So do we plan on trying to have this set up so we can use it? Like four tournaments, or is it just going to be practice only? I'm kind of. I think from the get go, the original group wanted a extra practice facilities. What would you like to see? Well, I don't know. I mean, I've heard several different things. You know, we could maybe generate a little bit for it or back from it. You know, by hosting tournaments. I I don't know enough about that stuff. You know, somebody that you can't. Uh, you can. You can't. Yeah, I mean, we were. You can't. No. Can't. Okay. You lose money on officials. Oh, yeah. official, yeah, but you'll be talking you about you host another tournament. <coughs> well, let's say it's a I think it's talking summer camp, maybe. Well, it's like summer camps, you know. I, I don't know. I'm just your thinking. sports team can make a thousand bucks, yeah. So, in yeah. our best interest, it's not to set it up for yeah, yeah. to host it's it. not going to be a for profit, no, yeah. But well, I'm not I saying for profit, but people coming back to me justify later. it. If this goes through and say, You're well, why the hell didn't y'all do this and why didn't y'all do that? And why did you build it like this? I mean, I catch hell about the elementary gym, and I wasn't on the board then. So. Me too. <laughs> well, when you think about the elementary gym, there's nothing you can do with that now. So I think as long as you build and plan for potential growth there, lay the foundation of what you need that you could finish, you know, add to. You can't get everything detail. right the first time. From a surface oh, yeah. level, oh, from yeah. a finishing perspective, I think. Use um, this. Do we? Okay. Do we want? I mean, I know we said no HVAC. Is that going to be? I mean, I know there's HVAC planned in this. Okay. But that's a cost that could be taken. That is a cost that could help reduce Maybe the total number. Later, if possible. It could. He says H, the AC can be added. Like you're gonna have to have heating. Cool. But the AC can be added later. <coughs> the floor can be added later. Extra bathrooms can be added later. And as far as hosting a tournament or having teams, I, mean, we just got, I just got back from a place that had <coughs> eight courts in one big room that were all temporary built. So, I mean, you could have, I mean, theoretically, a tournament where you have a game going on over the, in the main gym and Boys, then another game over in the other gym. Boys basketball went to the basketball camp at Florida State this year. 
They played on these temporary courts, and they were high-level AAU teams and really high-level high school basketball teams that were playing on them. So, you know. But yeah, I mean, we, we saw the number one recruit in the nation play, and that game was broadcast on ESPN. And it's not like you're providing a disservice to them by making them play on that instead of the wood four because of the best kid in the nation is playing on it. It's good enough for anybody else, right? Well, the best kid in the nation got to play on the wood four. Well, they had a couple of those. So. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it would probably also be better you're, for you're right. and, like, resurfacing. I mean, you wouldn't have to pay for that. I'm sure that'd be one thing because we don't know what it's going to cost to maintain and keep it Correct. going. Utilities. I mean, you, you should know. You just resur or you just reseal the floor, the basketball floor. Uh, uh, Sam, how much was that? Six thousand, seven thousand for the big game. Yeah, it's like ten, ten cents in total, both of them. Yeah. So you're looking at six or eight thousand if you did this floor every summer. Well, if you put in a sport tech floor, you don't have that cost every summer. So it's one and done. You don't have. Yeah. There's no. Yeah. There's no real Correct. maintenance to it. Correct. Just for things like this. And what's your replacement cost in it? Ten years down the road, or something wrong with it. What's like? What's the replacement cost of the gymnasium floor down the road? What do they look like? The general longevity on those. I'm not in that business. Well, they've been out for quite a while. Um, I mean, I'd say they've been around twenty years now. Yeah. The, new, the newer longer? ones. I don't think so. I would say they have some wear on them. <clears throat> I would say it's probably pretty similar to a wood floor. But if you get it in your in your lifetime last of it. I would, I would say it's probably pretty similar to a wood floor, how long it'll last. I'd say you're probably a fourth of the cost of a wood floor up front. Just a guesstimate from some preliminary numbers that we heard. And so if you gotta do it every 10 years, replace them, which I don't think it would be that quick. Uh, you know, that's four floors in the amount of time of wood floors there. And look how many times in that wood floor you're going to have to redo every year, every summer. So there's some more cost savings. I'm sure products, I'm sure these things come in and out of the market, but it, cool. um, they had, um, where we were at, they, they said it took you know five or six people about an hour to put the floor down. So I would assume that if you had a problem, it, it's not one continuous piece. You could come in and repair sections, kind of like, uh, well, like in here. Yes. With the carpet. Oh, you still want to see this video? Yeah, yeah. I, told you. I, I went down and visited with Matt Davis, Superintendent Eldon. This is their completed facility. It was a little over a million dollars. He did say he wouldn't be able to build it now for that, probably getting closer to mid million five or so, but he was able to take some, uh, some, uh, Shortcuts, but it looked came out nice. Um, it's about fourteen thousand four hundred square feet. It's all metal on the outside, two tone. So it's right on the campus. They already had the parking lot there. It has that one big garage door. They opened that up because it is. You see it in a minute. It has the uh, um, vent fans on the back wall there. The turf padding with the padding was really nice. It was spongy, it didn't feel like you were walking on concrete at all. Um, then you got your batting cages, they've got some steel cables up there. The kids did this on the side of the walls. They put all that up out of their ag department. It does not have air conditioning, but when he cut that on, it felt pretty good. It wasn't, it felt like he had a breeze through the whole thing. So it wasn't too bad. And it was probably 85, 90 degrees that day. Um, I didn't feel like I was stuffy or sweating bullets when I was in there. Um, so we just kind of walked around the building. They have that little mezzanine up there. They got a little storage uh, right there. This is what they use for heat, kind of like what you'd see in the shop. He said it only gets at the highest to about 55 degrees in there with those two. It's not like a full system, HVAC system, but 55 is pretty good for a workout. Um, you mean it's when it's really cold? Get yeah. Up to 55. Right. They they heat it up to fifty five. They kind of had this little area. They, they had attachments for the, the kid to build into the wall there for your baseball netting. They had a little electrical and cleaning room. Um, just kind of just out of 
you know, press board or something. One restroom, that's the only restroom in the whole facility, the only, only water fountain. Um, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. He said electric and water would be easily accessible, but right there on the corner of the building, he said, so that saved him a lot of money with our Morlock. If you put it, going to think about putting it where the Morlock property is, there's probably some bookends right there. You just need to pay attention to where you would put a building like that. There's 24 feet between each of those columns, and that, they are insulated. And they put those boards up to kind of prevent the insulation from getting torn up. He said it's just an indoor practice facility. Pretty basic, but serves their needs. With just three exit, walkout exit doors, is that really OSHA approved? You did get that more? approved. You did get that approved with the uh, um, fire marshal because they're not going to have any more than 100 people in there. That's what he told me. He had to go by local city code and talk to them about that. There's no sprinkler in this building. Um, and I went and saw their waiting room and uh, what they had going. Uh, we're comparable. But again, if I want to see some of these things they've done, they're, they're a neighbor, so I went ahead and took advantage of it. What they're doing out at the football stadium is kind of honoring a lot of their past athletes. Um, got their records out there. They really did a good job on their stadium. These tables are donor tables, $2,500 donor tables that sit out there. They got a place on there and their veterans out there as well. It's kind of cool. And to get their name on there, somebody sponsors it. That's the middle school wrestling room. We even have some weights in there. So I thought it was just kind of interesting. Matt was really good to me and took me around. Probably spent almost an hour just kind of looking around this facility and looking through the spots. So, yeah, what's going on around here? Then I also sent you that information on Mobile's 18,000 square foot field house, but we won't have to look at that. You can look at that yourself. That was a $6.2 million building. Quite a bit in that one, but it is a metal building too. Anything else you want to who built, well, who built that building for you? I have to get it from him. I've got a list. Uh, and then I sent you his pricing list. It's linked on your... Which one, Elvin? Mm-hmm. Harlan Denver. Yeah. He bid each little piece out. I think it away with Harlan building it. Model package. They did. Mm -hmm. Same way I think Elvin Hoover did his concrete. Just straight out bid. Building them all over. Uh, unless they have more questions on what Blaze and Mammoth had. Just to give you guys some financials on that, just break it down quick. Um, I mean, I know you're still, you know, uh, we don't have a definite number for you, but they don't, they don't either. Uh, I have some definite numbers about how much you have to work with. So. That may, general, that may help or hurt one of the other. Getting, but. getting a general idea of what this costs. You could bond with no tax increase about $4 million. You see where you are. You've got $300,000 from Fisher. The community's committed to another $300,000. That's your bottom number. And those are rough numbers. Need some wiggle in there, but David Brown's <coughs> your points about lights. My lights understanding from Blaze was that these rough numbers were rough to the high side, is what he said. Correct, yep. he did not want to quote us something that was going to be more, he'd rather give us a higher bid now. It, and it comes lower at the end. Uh, isn't this right, Caleb? Because this was towards the end. He said his boss said if all we had is three point whatever to work with, they'll get us something, you know. We may not have a basketball floor, we may not have a weight room or something, but they they can get you down to a number that we need. We just gotta figure out the wants and the needs. And, and I'd be with David, we're gonna do it, do it once and do it right. And well, if you're gonna ask for the money, ask for what you really need. There also you know? has to be a for sure plan, at least before, if it goes on the ballot, it has to be in black and white. No. This is what we're asking for. Yeah. For the support for, or else people just won't support it because they don't know what they're yeah, supporting. You, you just throw a number out there, it could be as high as five million, well, or it could be as low as three point two. Then 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Kaylin, you had the, the money discussion last week with him uh, about the 15000 for his work. Yeah, um, basically, so they, they needed us to commit to $15,000 uh, for the Cargo Foundation to take care of that to finish up the design work. Um, so we went ahead and agreed to do that, you know, pending a, a bond issue. Uh, passing her, you guys, uh, uh, okay, a bond issue. Uh, what Blaze spoke about with us uh, was, you know, we're, we're going to get these preliminary numbers and here's where we're at. Um, but it's really just to know what he's working with. So if it's something that, and I'm just going to throw numbers out, I'm not trying to, but if, if the if the board was comfortable with a $3.5 million bond issue and we were comfortable saying we have that 300 and get another 300 and we'd be looking at a $4.1 million project, right? Then we would come together, roll up our sleeves and really get a good design out there, which they're already working on to then be able to sell to the, and say, this is exactly what we are going to do with this money, right? And then it's up to the voting public to decide if that is going to be a good use of the bonding money that we have. So where, where he's coming from is he, we're kind of working through this backwards. We're trying to, uh, we're, they're usually coming through and say, all right, we're gonna know exactly how much we have to spend and we're gonna design the build to this and we're gonna let you know exactly what we can do. But right now when we're trying to have him tell us how much it's gonna cost before, before we bond. So, that's what he's looking for. And basically the, the gist that I've gotten is, you know, we're gonna, they'll be able to get us something as soon as they know, and they'll be able to build something for us. Uh, and might, might take some concessions. And, and, and to your point, yeah, we wanna get it done right. We wanna get it done right the first time. But does that mean we're never gonna do anything? Because we're never gonna be able to get it done right the first time? No, I'm just not, you know, I, I, no, I, I, I don't want to run into this half ass. I mean, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it right. I don't think anybody wants that. Well, there's things happen. And once you get a plan, you, you, you can't get, plan for COVID and the skyrocket prices. So, so do I understand correctly, Kaylin, that? the Cardinal Foundation is willing to put forth the 15000 or whatever dollar amount. We've already is. agreed to that. Yeah, I'm sorry to cut you off, Ashley, but yeah, we've already agreed to that. So then the school is not out any upfront money to put to get that plan to get it on the ballot. On the design? No, that, that's, it was a $15,000 is what the agreement read, um, whenever I read the agreement, to get the design plan in place. And with the presentation and 3D rendering and, and everything for us to present to the public. So putting it on the ballot does not cost the school anything up front. It costs us Allison, it will cost us about six thousand dollars to at least put it on the ballot. Just or three more more it's gotta go on the ballot for in three counties. By the time you that's the total term. that's the total for the last one. That's the term. Term. Yeah. And then we'll have to, yeah, thanks, Greg. We'll have to run it through the attorney, so probably another 1500 there, so it might be seven, eight thousand dollars into it. Should be. Okay, so that's the plan. Andy, before you run off, I do have just so I'm understanding correctly. I'm going to take, you said that you can do away with the mezzanine, yeah, and the well, you can go ahead. Remind me how you can take the two hundred fifty thousand. Well, dollars. remind me. Tell me again how we're going to reclaim this that was in green that they shrunk. By the blue one. take the two take the two fifty off for waiver and equipment, and then you got three hundred thousand if you choose not to do a mezzanine. So you've saved over five hundred thousand there, and uh, he was going to reduce restrooms a little bit if possible. He's not promising that you can get away with that. Right. But Elvin proved one toilet is good enough. I don't know that, Jason, do you think we'll have more than 100 people in here very often? I think you did. One or one, you'd be okay. Yeah. So, it's TRN games? Yeah, I don't think there's more than 100 people there for TRN Saturday. 
But I, I believe there'd be at least one man in here that would not, he'd probably be disappointed there's not another basketball court. That's what. No, I'm talking with a basketball court, but maybe not have all turf throughout the whole building. Have a basketball court, have partial turf, have your weight facility on one end of your building. I mean, I guess it's possible. I don't know if their building's big enough for all that. Just asking. It, it, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. The You're looking at 1.5 million? 4.5 million. <clears throat> and you said yourself, something's better than nothing. Yeah, I agree with that. I thought the mezzanine was for, that Coach Duke wanted that for storage because of the buildings up there behind the old ag building are terrible shape. He doesn't want anybody to go in there other than himself. So we take away the mezzanine, that's taking away some of the storage. He'd still be gaining some storage in the field house by removing weight room and a few other things out of there. So coach, if we remove the weights out of the field house, is that gonna open up the door for the wrestlers to have a spot to put their mats and no. leave them? We wouldn't put them there. They would have a gym space. They would have a gym space where they could put their mats. The elementary gym or the new, the new facility. We would not put them in. I would, it would not be my, choice to put them in that room. Whenever we have three usable gyms, the elementary gym's not really big enough to use for basketball. If we have that one to use for basketball, and we have the elementary gyms that's not really usable for basketball, my choice would be wrestling goes to elementary gym, which is way bigger than a 40 by 40 mat. Yeah, I just want to make sure, you know, we're talking, yeah, they're not in the cafeteria, have to roll up their mats every night. No. You know, they're practicing every night. I'd like to see this don't take me wrong. I don't want to see this just for basketball. I want to see it gain everybody. Yeah. You know, so if there, we can gain a spot for wrestlers, you know. Basketball is a small piece. Wrestling is the biggest piece. It's been 30 years since this school added wrestling, and no one's did anything about it for 30 years. And yeah. it, frankly, it's, it's pretty disgusting that they practice in the cafeteria yeah. that kids eat there the next morning. I'm the basketball coach, <laughs> but I mean the reality of it is, is you have 30 years to play in, and nobody playing for it. Well, 30 it's years. Time to start. Exactly. Right. Um, Exactly. And that's what Well, they did build concerned. that building on the weight room for wrestling. Well, they they didn't build it big enough for a 40 by 40. That's yeah. what they had the funds for. Right. They didn't mess with it. I right. wrestled in there. It was not big enough. No, yeah. I, I get it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what they planned. It, it was better than Yeah. And so now there's a group that's trying to help improve things that haven't been improved in the last 30, 40, 60 years. So do, do, you, do you have any numbers on just the volume? Yeah. Craig, did you have another question? On no, I was just I just wanted to be sure I understood how we could reclaim that area back instead of being thirteen four hundred. Maybe try to get back to sixteen. Elvins was fourteen and right? fifteen. Elvins yes. was fourteen four. And Elvins, you said Dr. Rob was short, right? It was only like 14 foot side walls? Yeah, it wasn't real tall. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was real close to where you could see. You probably could, got basketball. You couldn't shoot. It, it was 19. Probably. I kept looking at it thinking what a baseball half court shot would look for some kid when you did. It was close. Yeah. What is our minimum height for a basketball court? There's no standard minimum, no. but typically you don't see anything less than 20 feet. Sidewalls. Lincoln's is about Lincoln's old high school gym. They just built a new one, but Lincoln's old high school gym is about the shortest sidewalls I've seen. That's got to be right at twenty. So, 
so going off the bike, I, I didn't play basketball. Don't, nobody throw a foot at me. Back now. I didn't have the coordination to slam down, so I was out. Do we, like for safety of the kids, do we have interior walls where they're playing and practicing you know, basketball? Do we need padding? Is that stuff? Okay. Well, they they plant they plant this company. This is what they do for a living. And I just want to make sure. Yeah, and, and they no, that's a fair question. And they plan for stuff like that. But it'll just be directly underneath the goal. Yeah, like it, you know, like our high school gym. Now we have the nice full wall mat. Yeah, because it looks nice and it's nicer to have. It's safe. It's more safe than just having a standard sixteen feet. But standard sixteen feet is what a lot of schools do. Well, I don't want Bob in there trying to slam dunk and hurt himself. <laughs> And I don't think you can push it. Like Belton did all that wood around there too. To get some or something. Do they have it? Have they set a design on what their in, in, interior walls is? Is it just going to be steel or is it? I, we don't know. They are still cranking stuff out as fair we speak. Enough. He's these guys worked hard today to get us. Oh, this fair thing. enough. Not yes. You know, we'd like to know too. <laughs> I guess one question I got, are we dead set that we need to go, and I'm not trying to kick you on the shorts, are we dead set we need to go with mammoth, or is it something we can throw a bed to and do like Eldon and have Zimmerman throw the steel up, and then we go at the floor with who's your, who's your superintendent, the general, who's your general contractor? Sounds like Superintendent Eldon did. Is that right? Yeah. He did. I mean, I see Harvey Zimmerman's buildings. There's, I mean, there's not a lot to them. You throw the steel up and it's there. They're all big buildings, though. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Derek, I would agree with you. I think you could probably find local contractors that could throw down the concrete and throw the building up and do it for cheaper than what this company's concrete and building is going to be. I, I think you are definitely right, but they also figure in everything else for us. The turf, the basketball goal, how to hang them from the steel that's there. We're not then trying to find another company to hang goals and be like, well, I wouldn't have done it like this. You know, yeah. this company does it from the ground up, um, the whole process. And all the promotional stuff too, correct? Correct. But that's not a bad route to go to get a comparison. Promotions, though. Yeah. And also, I mean, they're talking about how a general contractor and a superintendent may have done it, but that is somebody's full time job. And if you're building something like that, there are 10,000 phone calls that will have to happen. Somebody has to be on site to make sure that everything is coordinated with the contract. I mean, it's, it's not something. For someone to volunteer to do, or for the superintendent to, or you know what I'm, I mean. I'm not a general contractor, and I don't play one on TV. Just so you know. And Matt Davis has a little bit of background. He does. That. Yeah, I mean, I think there is some value to. I mean, I, I get the idea of like exploring. Um, people that can come in and do this, but there's a lot of value to hiring, just kind of what you said earlier, you wanted to do it right, <laughs> this is the company that specializes in this. Um, there's some value to there. mm -hmm. Everything has to coordinate, and that's what they would be the ones doing, instead of us, or somebody else. Thank you guys. Thank you. I appreciate you. But so we need to. If you want to, Dr. Robs, you have Blaze's number, correct? I talked to him twice today, yeah. Yeah, so you guys, he said get a hold of him anytime and he'll help. So I guess we just need to come up with a dollar amount to put on the bond issue to put in front of the voters to see if this is something that the community is interested in. 
Well, I think, I think we're still way too far out on plans. I mean, we're gonna have to have, no offense to what the guys have already done, but in order to get the voters to even look at this twice, there's going to have to be concrete plans. This is going to be in there. That's going to be in there. That information would be provided before November the whatever that date is. No, that's what the plan is. Plus, I don't they're know. Not they're going to already pay the fifteen thousand dollar. They're not doing this unless we fee. agree to put it on the ballot. They're going to ixnay and stop the process if you guys don't agree to put this on the ballot. Okay, so I'm going to rewind a little bit here. You guys have to choose a design firm. You should probably advertise for who you want to use. It's okay, it's man, but we should probably post it if you want to do that. That's one decision you have to make. Are we working with Mammoth? Because you already have a district architect. It's fine if you don't use him. But at some point, you need to advertise and decide as a board who you want to work with. It could be Mammoth because they're here knocking at our door. So we had to take for the district architect and Mammoth no. architect? No, you choose one or the other two. If you look at your construction design delivery methods, okay, right there, you kind of go through that. They would be your uh, construction manager of risk. Dan talking to our lawyers about this stuff. So they're going to come in, they're going to assume all the risk, they're going to design this thing, they're going to do it in house and give you the final price and all those things they're kind of doing right now. And they have all the, the uh, contractors they like to work with, and it's just going to kind of go forward so their numbers their number if we're not going to take the gamble on no. price change or nothing like that is no. we get them under contract is what happens is they finally give you the final finals it's kind of what we get with the big project up here and I say this is how much it is and unfortunately we went took so many times to pass the thing we went through that inflationary rise and we didn't have them under contract yet because they were still getting the flux of inflation and COVID and everything else going on when they finally gave us the price it was a lot more well that's what i want to make sure yeah well this is going to be a so if you put an rfp out be an rfp whichever qualifications your guys going to have to do that without you paying fifteen thousand. is that right if he's going to submit for bid or is he not going to submit a bid or he's going to go off of this you wouldn't give a bid at this point you'd say we have the qualifications, they respond to your, it's like posting a job. Say, we want a design firm, could be Insight, could be them, could be anybody. You say, you look at them all, you interview them if you want to, you choose one. So, and then that person puts it out for And then that bid. design firm, which you do, works all those bids and tries to get it at the cost that they know you guys can pay. So if it's $3.6 million, it's like what they're doing. But those fees are going to come out of that 3.6. You're going to start eating away at that pretty quick. Yeah. yeah you can start that. So, contractors, that's not too bad. So, the big question is, is what is the board comfortable with asking the community for bond insurance? For how much? And that's why I told you a while ago, you probably better ask for all the money you can get. You bond for all of it. You just have permission to go $4 million. Then you only do three. And we just kind of issue them as we need them. Doesn't have to be all at once. We don't want it to be. So, uh, but if you don't get all the money you need to get this project going, if you're going through one project and watching how many different things change underneath your feet. That's so what Dave's saying. <laughs> Those things come up. <laughs> it's like you better have something to work with in your wallet. Don't go to Six Flags or Silver Dollar City with twenty bucks. You're not going to make it. You know. And I'll still say that. Have enough in your in your bank that you've got something to work with because you're going to get community needs. You're going to get People who want to see those portable bleachers, you're going to get, you know, hey, we don't really want those rollout basketball courts. We want the ones that come down and we can lift them up if we want to. You know, things change. So this board decides what that final, like Dave was saying, what it finally looks like and what he puts his name on and say, hey, I helped build this because I want it to be right. Right? Did he talk about sidewall height with you guys? Yeah, I think originally he was talking like a 22. Time frame is to the bond money is five years. It's five years, but they don't recommend that. They like you to do it within about three. You start carrying that money and you start building interest on it, which is kind of nice, but you're not really supposed to go get a loan for money and then earn money off money you borrowed. It's not frowned upon. I don't 
So you could get five years that you're waiting for. I would wait five years. You know, we, we would engage whoever you guys choose to work with and then start moving forward and listen to this group on what they want to see, what you guys want to see, getting that final design put together and going for it. So it's hard as they said earlier, this is kind of coming backwards because we're listening to the community instead of just coming with our own projects and proposals. We're listening to what the community says they want to do. And I've heard it since I've been here. We need basketball, we need some more space for wrestling, we need all these things. They don't have them. So this is what the community is saying to you. You guys decide as a board how you want to respond to that. So do we need to? Well, we don't, we don't need to vote on our own. We're just going to do You can direct me if you want me to start that. I will. We'll start the RFP. Yeah, it's all included. We got three chances. We'll let them respond. Give them a few weeks. I'll just work in the computer. So those two people you want to work with? No. Also, if you're wanting this on as an issue, how much you want to bond for? I have to know now. Or I have to start talking to the lawyers and talking to the supervisor and say, we got to get the bonding language together. Because that has to be approved on August 14th for us to turn it in by the 27th. There's some polishing sometimes to do the 14th or what you want it to say. That's to be on November's ballot. And I also advise you, a lot of a lot of school districts, and this is all the way back to my beginning in admin classes, they don't put it on a presidential election, but you know what? Maybe that helps us have more voters come out and weigh in. Because our voting has gone down over the years. It's about half what it used to be. We used to have well over a thousand people voting, now we're lucky if we get six hundred. What's our percentage? Do you know what our percentage would be if it moved to April? It's the same. Same. same That's your last two shots at it with 57.14. But the difficult piece is what Dave's talking about with the details. You know, people want to know that stuff. They want to know what we're getting out of it, what are we committed to. So if you go all the way back to when, you know, people told me that the elementary gym should have been a full size gym, right? So they felt like that project got shortchanged. I still hear about it. I don't have all the details of it. I found plans of it not long ago. But you don't want to overpromise and underdeliver on a project. Exactly. If you want to say these four or five things, they're in there. Will you vote for them or not? Let me ask, right? Well, if we're going to put a bond issue out there for them to vote on, we definitely got to make damn sure that we're asking for enough money. I mean, we don't want to say, okay, we think we can trim everything down and we can get down to 3.6 million. No, no, we ain't doing that. I'm not doing that. I'll say that. I'll say we. Best choice of words. But if we're going to ask for money, then by then we're going for money. Do it right. Do it one time. None of this half ass shit. Make it okay. What'd you say? I'll make it upgrades. We have another four million we could ask for with no tax increase. That will max us out for a little while until our assessed valuation goes up. Newsflash, our assessed valuation did not go up this last time. It's about the same. Sitting up right about 60 million. We get 15% of that. That's how they calculate that. 15% of your total assessed valuation is how much you can be in debt. So you've got about four million left, four point two. Now, if I'm understanding this right, if we ask for, say, 4.5 million just to cover any of what happens, you can't we don't four. have to. You don't have 4.5. You can okay. go for four. Okay. Okay. You'd have to ask for a tax, tax, tax increase. Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah, right. Where he was well, really no. going with that was if we ask for four and we only need three. That. Yes, kind of. Okay. I mean, because we're, we're, we're only a year to pay what we need. need. We don't have because we have because we have refinanced a lot of our stuff over the years, we've saved this community a quarter million dollars in interest since 2017. And because we've got down lower rates now, and we paid a lot of stuff off because we've been able to catch up on it, we can use the same levy that we use for our debt to pay off another four million without raising our debt service. But we are limited by law. 15% of our total assessed valuation is all we can be in debt. So that's about $8 million roughly. So we got $4 million we can still burn. Think of it like a credit card that has a limit. That's the limit to get another $4 million we can go into. But that'll max you out for a while. So what you have to ask yourself is, 
Do we have HVAC to replace? Everybody say no. no. Do we have windows to replace? Everybody say no. Bob? Do we have a bunch of people moving in? A bunch of people moving in that are gonna, we've got a bunch of Section 8 housing or a new company moving in to bring a bunch of people in. We've got an influx of kids. Not that I'm aware of. New businesses moving in? Not really. We're pretty stable for the last 15 years. I'm just giving you a perspective. We have no major maintenance or projects that we know need to be done just to keep school open. Then you can think about a project like this and figure out what it's going to be. But then you have to wait till your assessed valuation creeps up some more because at some point you're going to have some maintenance. 2027, we probably need to look at our roof and see if we can do some resealing. Is it a million dollars? Is it $250,000? Don't know. But my point was, like, she was helping out with there is if we go for the four million and we only use 3.5 then we're going to look good and we don't have to use that other half a million dollars what you can do is you can write in the bonding language to use it for this facility or other projects maintenance projects in the district which could be the restrooms over at the field house that would be what you want. that would be what we want to do just to provide some flexibility um, depending upon, because these yeah. are still rough costs, and like Jason said, they're estimated on the yep. high end. So, and you I think as explicit or as general as you want to, but let everybody know on the front end what that project is. This is absolutely going to happen. So. Yeah, I think that when you kind of just step back and think about it, the question you need to ask well, I think what we found out is that you can build a building, um, you can get a an athletic facility. Um, the question is, uh, do you do you want that or not? Right. And the voters are going to make that decision. Well, that's one thing I wanted to mention earlier too. Is that um, you know, I mean, that's what we're elected to represent. We've had enough people approach us to say I would like to see this uh, facility, and I I don't think it would be appropriate for us to say no. We're not going to do that. We're not going to represent. You, or at least provide the option for people to, to vote on it. Where you it, it may where be you hanging out. The ain't place I've been hanging out. Well, I'm hanging out. I'm just telling you. Well, well I'm not up to the I'm, voters. I'm getting, you know, it, it's up to the voters. So it's, I mean, I'm approached and they're going, no, 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 no. But, yeah, you know, and, it, and those it's same eventually people, up to the voters. And those same people yes can no. put no on the ballot. And then at the end of the day, they're we're where voters. we should be. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, we're where what the rep, we're what the community wanted. I think the problem is when we say, "Oh, I'm hearing somebody say no, this shouldn't be on the ballot." We don't offer an opportunity for the people that want to say yes to vote yes. Yeah, that's that's fine and good. I mean, we it, it will be eventually decided by the voters. I mean, there's no matter what we agree or disagree on here, it will be decided by the voters. And I think ultimately that was kind of what my point was. Okay. Was that um, wrong same thing. I think it's appropriate to put it in front of the voters for them to decide. That was kind of what I said, but I didn't do it very well. No, no, you're fine. I just want to make sure you're not alone. Or at least what I was trying to say yeah. didn't do it very well. Doing, like, yeah. 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 Kelly, Kelly, I think, asked, or David did one about making the, the decision. If you all decide to put this on the ballot, would you all be willing to make a committee of two, three people? And then since the Cardinal Foundation is raising money, let them have two or three people out of their group and form a committee of the two parties to narrow this down. You can't be asking 60, 80, 100 people in the community, well, what do you wanna see? What do you wanna see? I think between two or three of you all and two or three on the Cardinal Foundation, if you can get those together, that group of people know what the community wants. And I think you can meet with the company you decide, Mammoth or whoever. Would you all be willing to agree to that, to let the Cardinal Foundation have some say in the building, the finishes or whatever you choose to pick inside the company, whatever? Well, I'm gonna be supervising the job. If it passes, I'm gonna be up there when they break ground and right through till they hang the last door. He's retired. He can. I'm retired, so I can be right there. I can't speak for the board, but I think it would be a good idea to have 
a steering committee, you know, to kind of. I think you guys are the ones who started it, so I feel like they should get some input. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, we're going to have the final say, but you can't yeah. even swing it. You know, if everything goes right, but I think, you know, everybody with their heads and ducks, if you're battling, you ought to get a chance. Yeah, I think that's the way we've kind of approached some other projects in the past. We've had the feedback that, um, you know, basically we've taken into consideration and kind of put that all together between what everyone wants and what the costs are, and then make that as a recommendation that we vote on as the final project that we're kind of shooting for. So I, I would say, yeah, I mean, it, it would, that would right, a, I mean, you guys will have to make that final decision. It's your ultimate big pot that we're playing with, you know, but I think if the Cardinal Foundation's willing to find some money, they ought to have a little bit of input and help in some of the decision making. I don't think a steering committee with some community members on it's a bad thing. No, I don't it's bad. Okay, by me. We need to make a motion to approve that part of it, or? For a steering committee? No. No. Okay. We do need to make a motion for the RFQ. Yep. Right? So um, I'll move to issue an RFQ, issue an RFQ uh, for the design of the facility. Okay. So we got a motion by Bo. I'll second. Seconded by Ashley. Everybody in favor? So no, maybe. Also make a motion to draft bond language and what amount. And I'll have that for you guys to approve. So you're gonna give me direction to engage a municipal advisor and a lawyer to draft bond language for how much money? The bond how much? Up to how much? Four million dollars. Is that a motion? And a motion. Okay. Second. So we've got a motion with David. Seconded by Amanda, Kelly, yep. Ashley, yep. David, yes. Bo, yes. Amanda, yes. Derek, yes. myself, yes, set up. That'll be on the agenda on uh, <coughs> August. <coughs> You'll see the final bonding language, and we'll approve that. We'll turn it in. Don't come off too big, boys. And we did say. For November, correct? For yeah. November? And we did say we'd include that extra language for flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all we're good. Do we? I have. I. I, I just don't. Do we want that extra language? If you have because extra I think money, he gets paid. You have extra money. That's why I went for the four. But you don't want to promise them that you're going to do it, and you don't have the money, and they well, I voted for the bathrooms too. Well, that's what I'm worried about. I mean, I think trust in our community is we want this facility because this place they go bathrooms anyway right can we say it can yeah. just be used for it's got bathrooms it? i mean this one here we're going for this plan right yeah maintenance we're just saying other maintenance projects so it's going to have bathrooms if you, have money if you get four million you get six hundred thousand you're going to have to do this project yeah. well i guess so, you know, it's not over here yeah Harry, if you just leave it there. Caleb, question here. I'm, I'm and i'm sorry i, I guess i guess my my question, what I would, what I, some information that I would like to pass on, because we're, we're going to, and thank you, but we're going to move on and we're going to tell Mammoth on our end that they're going to that 15,000. So they're going to, they're going to start right. the, their, their side. And I know you guys have your RFQ, but this is something that the, the foundation is doing on our end, right? But I guess my, my main question is when we talk to them is, and a $4 million bond issue is great. What are you? What are you comfortable actually with that bonding money? What What are you wanting us to, to go to? Are we wanting to look at maybe trying to see what we can get away with, what they can provide us with, with a uh, three point six million dollars from that and six hundred thousand dollars from the Fisher money and the foundation? Are you looking at well? Let's see what, what they can do at a three point two. Because if we tell them four and then four six with the additional money that we're kind of thinking about, it, they're going to get there, right? They're going to get there. So, I mean, are you wanting to throw in a contingency of 20%? I mean, just have them come up with like three different phases, kind of what you're talking about. Like the three you know, different phases. With like air, without air. Each. So, okay. Three, five. With the 30 or the, the full one, 
14 4. Okay. Okay. I mean, you're, you're on the right track. Well, I mean, because I just don't want to, I mean, whenever we talk to Coach Duke. And if it comes under 4 million on our, and then you got the 600, that's bonus, right? So then. Well, we want to spend that. I mean, that's what we're. We got that. Yeah. But then like Dr. Rob said, if we have, if we use your 600, and then we have room to work on concession okay. stands so or bathrooms or. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think parking lot, whatever. Yeah, I mean, we, we if we're bonding for four, then we should be prepared to spend four, right? So I think. But I'm, I'm just afraid like, with them getting knowing how much you're going to spend. Mm -hmm. Guess what the bid's coming in. Right. I say so you just look at straight four. Why? It's good. I mean, we go through your numbers up front. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I just I want to, I, you guys are being good stewards of the district's money, and we want to be a, a partner with that too. So that's why I just I didn't want to go tell them. Woohoo! We got it. Let's make it as pretty as possible, no matter what. And and I just want to make sure we're we're we were comfortable. We'll just kind of talk to them, talk to Blaze about and get some different options. Okay. Could, yeah, I think that's you know. good because I think if we said, hey, we've got four uh, that we bond for and then we may have an extra 600, it's the kind of money we're working for. Can you give us some options on how we get up to that or what we get if we stay below that? You know, something Now, like your people are still gonna commit, right? 300? That's where we're working towards. Okay. I'm just saying, if we're gonna go 4 million, we were kind of promised it would be 300 from Fisher and 300 from the foundation. I hate for them to say, oh, we don't need it now. So that's, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a fair concern. And I don't think, I think we're, it, and I will say the Cardinal Foundation is not a single purpose entity. No, I got it. Either. So it should be for activities. Not, it's not, it's not something that we are, that we are creating this foundation for a construction of a multi-purpose facility it's for it's going to be hopefully something that goes on in perpetuity for the benefit of Tipton students and activities and if done right I want my picture on the wall too your name right, is so moving on to new business now that we got to take care of I don't know why this is on here but anyways plus part <laughs> I know why it's on there those buses being parked up there across the blocking off Dean Gibson's lot. And I talked to, as soon as I saw them, and I was, I've had more half-tunes over them buses being parked there like that. Even though it was school property, there was many people in the community that didn't like it at all, even though they weren't, didn't have anything to do with parking anything up there. And when I approached Durham and said, hey, you need to move those buses. They don't need to be parked like that. They said, we can't. We got to call our boss. And I said, well, you call your boss. If he's got a problem with it, you tell him to call me. And left him my phone number. When I saw him the next day, they said, no. Nope. He said, we can't move unless Dr. Rob tells us to move. So it took forever to get that moved. So, so, what's the issue? Well, I think that was not very nice to park the buses across there blocking that off. Well, I don't think it was done intentionally because they had a banner on the one trying to... Well, it's originally, the banner bus was sitting kind of on the grass or in on down a little farther where the rest of you could go around it. But number 10 was pulled way out from the fence not anywhere near where it was parked now. I don't have any idea. When I went by, it was headed northeast. You couldn't fit a scooter between them. I mean, I you, mean just, you couldn't walk between them. And I'm just saying, I don't care about the parking, but it looked weird. Yeah. It just looked, it looked like they were out of place. Kind of like the one up here by St. Mary's. It looks like, it's like they just got out and left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looked like it just wrecked from the field. I, I talked to the general that? manager the day before yesterday and just kind of asked him about that. And he said, how, how, when I left for vacation, I said, that's not where that bus was. Um, can you tell me how it got over there? Because when I came back off vacation, it was right where you said it was, Dave. And he said, uh, well, you know, we wanted to, we're trying to get this last bus driver 
hired, so I, I moved it over there trying to catch some of that traffic coming from Jeff City. And I said, yeah, I'd probably don't park there. Can you move it? And then I'd already changed it before that. So just kind of keep it in the center, like where you had it before. So he said, fine. Well, the number 10 bus. Yeah, it's moved to. From original. Yeah, so it is moved now. And where it's parked at now is fine with me. Yeah. And the original banner bus was kind of sitting on that right. island, I call it. That's where I told him to put it. And that was fine and good. But when yeah. I, after I talked to him the first time about moving that number 10 bus, then all of a sudden it's pulled up and goes yep. up toward number 10 where you yep. couldn't hardly walk between. Them. What's our agreement with our parking there? We provide space for them. We're getting about a hundred thousand dollars over five years. I couldn't remember what that was, but space space for them to park, but not advertise. Well, they can advertise too. I think they're our drivers. We want them to be drivers. How many well, buses? Well, 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 I, I mean, mean say the bus that looks like a rectangle. Yeah, how many, yeah, how many buses are we going to have to house? Like how many like buses are we going to have to house? Five, six, seven, ten. Not many numbers. I find out. I think it needs to be I think they're going to have. They told me four on the hill. If you look at that graphic again, I, I was able to finally get a superimposed image over that and see those little yellow squares. That's where they're gonna park them right there. So the whole lane there is gonna be open. Um, I know uh, Mr. Gibson needs to access his pole right there. So we're probably gonna have to pull from either side from his property over there and still pull out through ours. That shouldn't be a problem. Um, it's, I mean, it seems like if we're offering, if we're offering a place for them to park, just seems like we can, they can be adults and park in a proper manner when it doesn't block our neighbors. I that area. I, I mean, let's. It feels like we're. This is just silly. Yes. Um, it's, not, it's, it's childish and stupid. So I think they I, can I don't park. think that was the intent, though. After talking uh, with their GM, I think he was just trying to make sure his sign got seen. You know, that well, his, 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 his sign could have been seen where it was set. I don't disagree yeah. with you. I didn't tell him to change it. The other bus that was Pretty causing bad. the problem did not have a sign on it. Though. No, yeah. number it 10. Like, it was just and it could have been backed up to where it is now, but yeah. it wasn't. It looked like me trying to park yeah. the bus. Which <laughs> I had it. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. So what's the solution so we can be good to our neighbors? Do we need to rock that so they can back in there out of the way? So can I address this? Go ahead, Dean. Yes, sir. He's here. For 25 <laughs> years, starting in 1998 is when I bought that building up there. In 1998, I went to the school board in a setting very much like this, and I said, folks, I want to be a good neighbor. And for 25 years, I have rocked that whole parking lot all the way around your administration building and, and all that there. The only thing I didn't do is when Chris Holm tore the old building down, uh, I did bring him some rock up there, but, uh, but uh, he had paid for all that. But until then, I, I've done this on my own dime, and I did it because I want to support my local school. Uh, I don't want to do it for, for any other reason than that. Now, when, when they parked the buses there, I realized, now I've got, I've got a semi-truck that has to park there to our, to our electric pole. The trailer does stick out on the school property. I know that that has caused some conflict because I've heard it come around to me in the, in the community uh, that, that ones of you have, have said that very thing. Uh, I know that, that uh, you've been irritated that uh, some of the, the trucks off the highway park there. Uh, Dr. Up, I have you on video camera at 634 Friday morning walking your dog in your little funny outfit. Mm -hmm. And you took a picture of, of a tan truck there at 634 in the morning. Yeah. Uh, and I don't have no clue who he is, uh, but I was up there starting a conference call at 6 a.m. He pulled it off the highway. I told him, you can't, we'd rather you didn't park here. He said he needed to go to the restroom over at Casey's. He did that. He left right after you crossed the road with your puppy. Uh, so I, I realized that that really bothers you to have, have trucks in there. It does? Well, I've been told that. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not, but that. uh, but that's, and I just assumed it did because you took a picture of it. I didn't know who was parking up there, so we would have to contact those people. Right, I, I understand that. I'm not, I, you know, I'm not making, know, I got to clear it out for those buses. I got to know who's parking. I understand that. I'm not making accusations or anything, but, but here's like what I did the other day. I went through there and uh, I would suggest, I put some, you might have seen some green flags along through there where that, that grass is. I would suggest that we peel that, that uh, topsoil off there, or at least the grass off there, the sod off there, and I will do this for you and re-rock that, and then you can park buses right up to the highway, uh, and you have plenty of room to park buses in there, and maybe your, your, your maintenance staff can go behind it, things like that. It would, it would almost triple your parking up there. 
if you uh, if you did the the calculations and looked at what it did. Uh, I would do that, and David, you came by my office, yep. and and we talked about that, and and uh, and that's why the flags are up there. David, you asked me not to do anything until this board meeting, because you said the board should make the decision whether we're going to pull that grass out, re-rock that. Uh, uh, Mr. Rob, you uh, you told me on the telephone uh, that uh, Durham had had uh, special aggregate they wanted on the ground when we first talked. That, no. Uh, that, that was that was my proposal to the board. That was your proposal to the board. Okay, well, I misunderstood. I thought that was Durham had that, so I just need to know what kind of aggregate you're going down. I knew they would be down. up in there and tearing it up. So. Pardon me? I knew they would be up there and they're tearing it up. It's the well, same thing that happened just tell me what you want there, and, and if you want me to do this, I'll be glad to do this. And this isn't a one-time offer. I've been doing this since 1998. I want to continue to do this on into the future. I think this is the least that, that your neighbors and local businesses can do to help their school out. And I want to continue to do that. Uh, do you have any questions for me about about being neighbors up there? What could I do more to help you? I think it's a great offer. Guys, I've stored your wrestling mats in the past. I've stored sheds up there. Uh, I've donated that for a number of years. Of course, you're not using it anymore. Uh, I, I tried to work with the FFA and the, and the Vocational Ag Department when it was up there. Uh, and, and I'm always looking for ways to help my local school and help the kids in the school. Uh, and, I'm that, and folks, that's not going to change. Uh, but, but I want to I wanna be a good neighbor to you and I want you to be a good neighbor to me. Yeah, I've had a long time picture in the area that that's a solution for some kind of thing. I think it's a football game. Yeah, yeah. 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 cool. yeah. yeah. Pull that up, you'll be able to see yeah, it. It's like about where your yellow line goes. It is almost exactly there. Yeah. Dean, is it something? I know you can't see this picture, but can I walk around there? Sure. It's all right. Just, if Dean gets eyes on it, I think he can understand. What's that? So this is where Dr. Robbo said something about. Excuse me. Okay. Said something about parking the buses. Would that, if we did that in addition, would that give you room to get your semi kind of backed out at an angle and still get to your pole? Oh, sure, that's that's fine. I just, I can't have somebody sitting exactly behind it. Yeah. We can come out this way, but I, I'm i not gonna have, let, let them back a, a, a truck in there not be able to see behind them with kids and everybody around. Yeah. I'm just not gonna do it. Well, I just didn't know if we did like you talked here and then maybe this here too and got your semi backed in there kind of out of right. the way. Here's what I was suggesting doing is right here with this, when this yellow line is here, this is what I was going to re-rock. You could park the buses like this facing the, the highway. You're talking both these little sections here? Just yes, I was going to yeah, right. take this off and then make all that rock from here all the way to your building. Yeah, it'll be less long. That's what I thought was a good idea. Put those there a while back. Do we need a vote on that? Do you want that all torn off yet? I think it's. It's it may, I mean, to me, it makes sense. I make a motion to have Dean do that for us, and thank you, Dean. Yep. Awesome. It'll it'll be done uh, very shortly with the board, with the approval of the board. I'll second. So we've got a motion by David, second by Amanda, Kelly. Yes, sir. Ashley. Yes. David. Yes. Oh, yes. Amanda. Yes. There. Yes. yes. Myself. Yes. Seven up. Thank you, Dean. Yep. Thank, Thank you, sir. All right. I'll move us into executive session pursuant to six one zero point zero two one to discuss uh, three and thirteen. I got a motion to vote. To include uh, Mr. Oh, Christopher. I, I think that's it. Uh, yeah. Seconded by David Amy. Kelly, yes, sir. Ashley, David, yes, Bo, yes, Amanda, yes, Aaron, yes, myself, yes, uh, take a quick break and then we'll get you back in.